Well, here's a case of no good deed goes unpunished. I, uh, several years ago, I don't know, it might be as many as 10 years ago, I took a class on how to repoint historic brick. And the instructor emphasized the need to use only lime mortar for historic brick. And of course I took that to heart and wanted to do the right thing. Uh, we're down in the cellar of my house and I believe there's a lot of rising damp going on here. And um, so I did the whole deal. I did lime putty mortar, uh, let the lime putty cure, or well, uh, let it sit as lime putty for like 28 days so it could be at its best and then, then did the mortar in the right proportions of sand and lime putty and had this all up and it was looked really nice. And I noticed a few years later that it started flaking off and within no time at all, I'd say, I don't know, maybe two years later, it was exactly as bad as it ever was. As you can see, it's just turned back into sand. And what I think there's a lot of rising damp going on here, and that has made the uh, made the lime leach out of the mortar. And they always say that the only thing that can destroy lime mortar is the same thing that produced it, which is water and fire. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do is repoint this. We also had uh, look at this pile of sand. That is all new since I repointed. And what I'm going to do this time is use type O mortar, which is one part, one part uh, Portland, two parts lime, and nine parts of sand. And that has pretty significantly higher compression strength than, um, than just the lime mortar, but uh, I think these bricks can take it. These aren't just like soft plantation bricks. These are more like uh, Victorian era press bricks. Uh, and anyway, I, I think we've proven that the lime mortar can't hold up. And uh, I, I say to hell with it. I'm not doing the right thing anymore. So we'll go through the process of repointing. So as you can see, the raking out of the joints is going to be a real piece of cake. Um, I'll just probably hose this down, most of it will knock out, brush it off, and start repointing. And we'll show you the process. Alright, so I blew out the all the joints and I scraped out anything that was loose and hosed down the whole wall with uh, water so everything's kind of moist or well has, has water in it so it won't uh, suck the dry moisture out of the the um, mortar. Here's my mortar mix. It's the uh, Type O. It's one part white Portland cement, two parts uh, lime, and nine parts sand. And I, I go really fast and probably kind of sloppy. This is a good thing if we're, that I'm in the crawl space, although I do try to want to practice every time I do something just to make to see if this is if this would be as good as uh, good enough to show to the outside. Uh, but anyway, what I do is I just have my little pointing slicker and I just just move the move the mortar into the joint, make sure it's packed, uh, over pack it a little bit and then cut it down flush with the bricks. And if I have a vertical joint, you want to fill the vertical joint before you uh, before you try to do the line above it. And again, so then I just go up here and fill it in until it stops going in. You see how fast that was. Um, and I can go through a wall this size pretty quickly. It's going to probably take about it would take me about 40, I mean about maybe 80 pounds of mortar to do the whole thing. But uh, then it goes pretty fast. A little vertical joint here. Um, 
and before you know it, you'll be ready for the next step. So I will just continue on this way and do this and then I'll show you what we'll do once uh, things start setting up a little bit. All right, I just completed installing about 20 pounds dry mix of mortar. And that did about, I'd say, half the job. So I'll be, uh, I'll be, mi or I am mixing up one other batch to finish off this side of the wall. And what you get is uh, you try to strike the joint, uh, filling up the joint fully, and then kind of strike it flush with the brick. Now in this case, the bricks uh, aren't all that flush. There's so there's lots of bricks that stick out. If you, this one here. Uh, sticks out well past that one and that one sticks out well past here so anyway you do what you can to get a kind of a flush joint that's the idea there is to get the maximum amount of mortar in the joint and that's the maximum amount of holding power you'll have now this new mortar isn't going to bear load the same way the old mortar did um, it's really kind of there to hold the old mortar, what's left of it uh, between the bricks, which is holding the load up, uh, you hold that together and keep it from falling out of the joint. Because once you get to a certain kind of a, uh, limit, then there's just not enough of that load-bearing mortar left in there, and it's just the bricks themselves will start displacing and coming lower and lower. And um, that's exacerbated by vibrations like trucks going down the road or in my case they're building a giant building two doors down and that's the tearing down the old one really shook this house up and um, for a lot of a lot of time I was just wondering whether the house was still going to be standing after all that was over with but this new this new mortar will keep the old mortar in place uh, hopefully bond with the bricks make the make it all kind of a more a stronger unit together and when it's all over hopefully it'll last. Now I've done some of this um, type O mortar before in this house uh, replacing the lime mortar with the with the with the 139 or 129 mix and it's it's lasted it's held up very well and it has not damaged the bricks it hasn't spalled them and so I in I didn't think it was really an option to go back to the lime mortar anyway since it was such a dismal failure the first time around and that was really I did everything by the book I pounded the lime into the sand and I waited I mean I cured it for 28 days did everything I could to do it by the book and it just uh, it disintegrated so I'm gonna try this and uh, and see what that gets me now, one thing that you do once you start sperming up, I think this is a really important step. You you beat the once it's once the mortar's kind of uh, pretty firm in there. You beat it with a brush, and what that does is it kind of pounds it into the joint to a certain extent, kind of embeds it into the joint and it exposes the aggregate and it kind of makes it look uh, I don't know old weathered not weathered but but just like it hasn't burned brand freshly put in it also knocks sand and mortar off of the bricks themselves so they have a pretty clean appearance and uh, in the past one thing I, I always did was I had a tendency to mix the mortar way too wet and what that did was it stained the it stained the face of the bricks and so it looked pretty crappy but if you do the mortar right just wet enough it'll hold a ball together then it won't stain the bricks and this last little step of pounding the the joints with the brush will will be the final step to make the bricks pretty clean um, so I wouldn't be I would not be ashamed to have this uh, out in view on the outside of the house. It's um, it's turning out good enough. And this is pretty um, minimally destructive to your new joint. A little bit of sand, 
a little bit of um, mortar breaks off when you do this. But I think the overall benefit of pounding the mortar into the joint is, uh, is really important. And when it's done, it goes from kind of a hodgepodge look. I had a, it goes from kind of a hodgepodge look to a kind of a uniformity to it. Even in, there's a case where the bricks are, you know, not, there's no, there's no way to strike that joint. It's, it's, it's a weird joint. You wouldn't be able to strike it, but when you, when you kind of beat it with the brush, it finds a place where it, it just all kind of comes together. And so this is an important step, I believe, and I don't think enough people do this. Now, if you're going to do some sort of struck joint, like a grapevine or whatever, um, then obviously you don't do this step. But I think this looks good, and it seems to really strengthen the, the mortar. All right, I finished all the uh, all the repointing on this particular wall. Now I'm going to do the uh, the final pounding down with a brush, and this will be done. Uh, it'll harden over the next 28 days, and hopefully I will get some years out of this, unlike when I did the lime mortar. You know, another thing I thought of when I was doing this was um, that lime mortar was very precious. It was. Uh, it took me a lot of time to prepare, and I even beat it uh, with a uh, a beating stick to uh, beat the lime into the mortar like they used to do. And uh, so it, every little bit of that mortar was very hard won. And whenever I dropped some on the ground, it just felt like a terrific waste. But this, when you do it like this, the mortar is so cheap. I mean, doing this entire wall here probably cost me about, I don't know, five, seven bucks in materials. And only the time it took to pick the stuff up from the cement contract, or the cement um, supplier. So, this has certainly been, you now. If I, you know, if that lime mortar had turned out to work really great, I guess it would have all been worth it. But it just turned into a powder in a matter of a couple of years, so it was a total failure. Now, I think it's the conditions down here, and unfortunately, that rising damp doesn't stop just because I put the mortar in. And it could, there's always that possibility that it could sacrifice the brick next instead of the mortar, which is what you don't want. But I literally got maybe two years out of that, out of that repointing job. So, I mean, that just doesn't work. Now I went up two steps on the hardness scale here. I went up from type, uh, whatever it was, just the lime mortar to type um, O, and there's a step in between there called uh, K, which is one part Portland, three parts lime, and 11 parts sand, so um, the, the amount of Portland is reduced overall, and the lime is sort of picked up, and maybe that was the right hardness to use, but I don't know, I had such a dismal result with the with the lime mortar that I kind of wanted to go up on more than just one step of hardness, go up two steps of hardness. So I guess we'll see. This particular wall is load bearing, it's bearing an important girder, at least for this uh, short length, this is about seven feet wide. So. Um, I don't know, we'll see. Like I said, I've done some of this mortar on my house before, and that's holding up just fine, and the brick hasn't spalled, the brick hasn't been damaged at all. So, 
I do have that experience to go go in my favor. And I can also look at that work and see how I used to really do the mortar way too wet. This one, this is cleaning off so nicely. You can see there's not really a lot of white stain on the brick. And um, that's a pretty nice result. Now, I don't much care because I'm down here in my cellar, but this is all practice. Every time you do something, it's practice for a bigger job. I might as well do whatever I can to, uh, to improve my skills. Um, this hole here is where they chopped a big hole through the wall to put the uh, refrigerant lines for the, for the air conditioning. And um, what I'm going to do here, since this brick is failing, this is pulling down, nothing supporting it anymore, I'm going to uh, put a kind of a big piece of this. This is the old gas line for the, uh, the gas lights down here when the house was built, had gas lights. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a big piece of uh, PVC drain pipe. I think I've got four inch around somewhere. And I'm going to uh, put that around the pipe and then uh, mortar all the way around it so the, the pipe itself will support the brick above. And that should have been, they should have thought of that when they did this, but of course they didn't. That's it for this little repointing project. And uh, I hope this was helpful and if you enjoyed it, um, just click like and watch my other videos. Thanks for, thanks for watching.